The Southern Poverty Law Center is being sued over racketeering, okay? This is basically, there's a group now, the Center for Immigration Studies is basically alleging that the Southern Poverty Law Center acts like the mafia. So this is from the Washington Times, immigration group demands SPLC revoke hate label. Center for Immigration Studies files racketeering lawsuit against the watchdog. One of the most prominent groups advocating for stricter immigration went to court Wednesday to demand a judge order the Southern Poverty Law Center to stop labeling it a hate group, accusing the self-described watchdog of running an illegal racket to silence political opponents. The Center for Immigration Studies says the SPLC's accusation of racist and anti-immigrant are not only wrong, but they have cost the nonprofit support and financial backing by scaring away people from doing business with the center. CAS brought, brought its challenge into federal court in Washington, D.C., filing a civil complaint under the Racketeer, Influenced, and Corrupt Organizations Act against SPLC Richard Cohen and Heidi Byrick, who runs the group's Hate Watch blog. Um, full disclosure, I guess, the Hate Watch blog had to apologize and retract many stories in relation to me. An Antifa activist in Portland wrote for no, I have no idea why, this is the weirdest thing, wrote a story about other people and then just randomly dropped in that I was alt-right and I was atten I, that I, I had attended a Holocaust deniers conference in Iran, which is the most insane nonsense ever, and his only evidence was a now-deleted website in which he found an archive that claimed I was a speaker with other far-left activists. The weirdest thing ever. Well, thankfully, the SPLC re responded to a strongly worded letter. They, they, they apologized, and on their website now it says we want to apologize to some individuals on the left, including Tim Pool, among others, so I can appreciate the retraction. They also apologized to Majid Nawaz and paid out a settlement. But here we have another instance. So they say, uh, Mark, Mark Krikorian, CIS's executive director, says his organization doesn't meet the SPLC's own definition of a hate group, and the Alabama-based watchdog knows it, but persists anyway, which he said was evidence of the racket. SPLC and its leaders have every right to oppose our work on immigration, but they do not have a right to label us a hate group and suggest we are racists. The Center for Immigration Studies is fighting back against the SPLC smear campaign and its attempt to stifle debate through intimidation and name-calling. CIS is not the only group to protest SPLC, SPLC's profligate use of the hate tag, but it appears to be the first to mount a challenge under RICO, a law that is usually more associated with the FBI's anti-mob efforts. Immigration the Center for Immigration Studies says SPLC defines hate groups as organizations whose official statements or activities align or malign an entire class of people, typically for their immutable characteristics. Mr. Krikorian said that he doesn't, that doesn't match his group, whose motto is pro-immigrant, low immigration. He says in practice that motto means CIS makes the case for fewer immigrants, but a warmer welcome for those admitted. CIS says it doesn't think its, its work amounts to it to attacks on people, but rather an attempt to raise policy questions. I'm not super familiar with Center for Immigration Studies, but I think that's actually, if that's how they frame it, and if that's true, again, I'm not saying it is, I think it's a really fair way to frame things. A warmer welcome for those admitted shows compassion, but for political and economic reasons, it looks like they're concerned about uh, too many immigrants coming in. I think if you're gonna have someone who wants to advocate for lowering immigration, that's the, that's, that is the appropriate way to go about doing it. Recognize the humanity of those who want to come here. Now, I will say my understanding of Center for Im Immigration Studies wants fewer immigrants across the board. And that's something I actually, I really disagree with. I believe legal immigration is, is really, really great. There's a reason we have a vetting process. And our government knows what it can handle. And sometimes it might be fewer, sometimes it might be more. But I believe a legal process, we really can bring in a, like, I don't, I don't know the, the limitations, obviously not infinite, but many immigrants. So I'm actually not someone who's, who's, uh, who would advocate for fewer immigration by no means. I would actually advocate more, uh, for more immigration for a few reasons. If the United States can convince skilled elites from other countries to come here, that is a ridiculously good thing that's going to empower and enrich the United States. Like, that's great for the American economy, you know? If, if the educated elite from other countries come here, and contribute to our economy and become citizens? Hell yeah. And then to a certain extent, I do believe we have to be careful about low-skill immigration because poverty breeds crime and other issues. So while I still think a vetting system can make sure we can bring in even more immigrants on the lower end of the spectrum, um, I do think there's, there's a much more of a concern simply because the educated elites are few and far between. By all means, if people are able to you know, generate absurd wealth for the rest of the country, it's a really good thing. I also want to make, make sure it's absolutely clear 
I do not believe we should give any special privileges simply because they have money. We do. I don't agree with that either. I'm a lefty, what can I say? But I do think immigration is a good thing across the board as long as it's legal, as long as people are vetted and we have our systems in place. And that's why I'm, you know, kind of center left and neutral centrist when it comes to the issues of like the wall and, and things like that. It's like, we need to control for immigration. I'm all about like bringing more immigrants, bring them all in, you know, I, that's fantastic. But we have a vetting system on purpose for safety, for security, and for built and for, for for economic planning. You know, we need to make sure that people are going into places where they will benefit and so will we. Otherwise, we're hurting everybody, right? But anyway, they, they, they apparently disagree with me, and that's okay. You're allowed to disagree. But to, I wouldn't label them a hate group. Granted, I don't know a whole lot about them, so my opinion isn't worth squat, but let's, let's read on. CIS's work is widely cited in the press, including the pages of the Washington Times. It issues awards for press coverage of immigration, including in the past to the, the Times. Its experts are regularly cited to testify before Congress, and its experts have been invited to meet with top Homeland Security officials in both Obama and Trump administrations. The center's work is also used by self-appointed independent fact-checkers such as PolitiFact, which in 2017 fact-checked the SPLC's hate designation. PolitiFact concluded that most of the evidence was guilt by association, and you know what? Absolutely true. I have the article right here. Is the Center for Immigration Studies a hate group? as the Southern Poverty Law Center says. And basically, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to read through this one specifically. I just want to show you. It, it, it's true. They, um, they go through and they basically say it's, it's relatively unfounded. Uh, no. They say uh, the Southern Poverty Law Center is the Center for Immigration Studies, a hate group. I don't, I guess it's a share card. CIS says no. Uh, it, so they say, um, I guess they basically, let's, let's go back to the, the, the main story because that's a complicated other story. I don't want to get too much into it. I want to focus on the racketeering thing. They say, Mr. Cohen, in a statement to the Times, said, CIS richly deserves the hate group label, and he looked forward to battling the group in court. It is a history of making racially inflammatory statements associated with white nationalists and circulating the work of racist writers, he said. Its lawsuit is nothing more than a heavy-handed effort to try and silence us from exercising our First Amendment rights to express our opinion. Now, this is actually a really interesting point. Why should it matter that the SPLC has called you a hate group? No one's imbued them with power, and they certainly have a right to call you whatever the hell they want. Hate group is an opinion. I don't know if this is going to actually fly. But we do know that there are potential damages, and we do know that people take the SPLC very seriously. But simply because in the private sector people are, willing, are scared or willing to you know, bow down to what the SPLC says doesn't mean there's a legal standing to sue them. It really doesn't. They make, a, they, they make a good point that they have the first right to say what they want. If, if I made a list of hate groups, you can't sue me if I call you a hate group. You can't. If I, if I called them a hate group, they couldn't sue me back because it's an opinion. But I want to point something out. Making racially inflammatory statements, what does that even mean, right? They didn't say racist. They didn't say uh, negative or derogatory. It's just inflammatory. Well, that could be a lot of things. Typically, I would say this is associated with a negative connotation. So, well, okay, that could be more specific associating with white nationalists. Is white nationalist an opinion? Are you going to say that associating, what does associating mean? Does it mean you went for coffee with, at some point? Are, would, would they accuse me of associating because I've interviewed people? Because you could, they, they, it's an opinion. They also say circulating the work of racist writers. In what capacity? Have they circulated the work of racist writers critically? You see how they frame things. I could claim, there was a, a joke I made a while ago about uh, a writer from the Daily Beast who frequently has insider information on the alt-right, and I have no idea how they do, and it's kind of weird that they know things about the alt-right that even, like, activists don't know. So I have to wonder who they're in connection with. More importantly, they attended Unite the Right in the capacity of press. The joke I made is, I could flat out say the Daily Beast employs people who actually attended Unite the Right in Charlottesville. Sounds crazy, right? It's true. I didn't say in what capacity they attended, but they did attend... As journalists, the point I'm trying to make is that you can easily frame these things and get away with it. If I made a video called The Daily Beast Regularly had, uh, uh, Employs People Who Have Attended Unite the Right, people would freak out seeing that headline. And I could show photos and I could prove it. Is anyone going to look beyond that? Because if you look beyond it, it is not a false statement of fact. But it leads people to the wrong conclusion. So let's just, let's just wrap things up here because uh, they, they basically want to talk about Majid Nawaz. They were forced to pay out $3.4 million. They say... CIS says it not only wants, to uh, wants a judge to award damages and order SPLC to remove the hate label, but to also order SPLC to affirmatively state on its website that CIS, CIS is not a hate group. 
Rico has also been used to settle thorny political clashes before, including the National Organization for Women, which in the 1980s and 1990s filed civil Rico claims against pro-life protesters at abortion clinics. Now, now claimed the protesters' actions amounted to extortion, National Organization for Women, it, the actions amounted to extortion and asked for the, tr for the triple damages allowed under RICO. Decades of litigation produced a mixed outcome. I think the Southern Poverty Law Center, that's my opinion, I believe that they just label people hate groups to keep fanning the flames because otherwise they don't make money. Racism is it's still alive and it's still very strong today, but we have made such tremendous strides against it. For the most part, we're doing pretty good. Unfortunately, a lot of the new racism emerging is coming from the regressive left, and I mean this seriously. And I'm not talking about racism against white people, like the way they think, you know, reverse racism. I'm talking about discrimination against Asians. I'm talking about the soft bigotry of low expectations. I'm talking about the white savior complex. I'm talking about Antifa activists yelling racial slurs at people. I'm talking about far-left activists showing up to conservative events and yelling racial slurs at people. I'm talking about the Yale study that found that white progressives talk down to black people. I believe we have a serious problem of left-wing white supremacy. And the problem is, conservatives have no problem calling out right-wing white supremacy for the most part. Like 99% like of the time, some of it gets away. Don't get me wrong, they're white supremacists who get away with it. The left ignores it and refuses to acknowledge the racism within their ranks. But I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see there are some activists associated with the far left who are now calling these people out. And that's pretty, that's a good thing. Anyway, stick around. I got some more videos coming up in a few minutes and I will see you then.